expanded plan today. Are you ready for the big question of the day? Who is Jesus? Let's take a look at these pictures and see if we can work out who they are before the time runs out. Now for a quick quiz. Let's see what you remember from last week. Number one, what did Jesus do for the person? Number two, what did everyone think Jesus was going to do for the person? Number three, who was the person? And now this is a hard one. Number four, why were some of the people upset with Jesus? And number five, if you had seen that man getting healed, what would you have told your friends? Okay, our secret agent is on the case of Jesus. Let's see what he's going to investigate today. Oh, I love this bit. He's drawing. Oh, I know what it is, Bill. It's our secret agent. There's his hat, big ears. I love him. He's looking at the evidence, isn't he, Bill? He's thinking hard. He always looks up in the air when he's thinking. Yeah, he works out what really happened. Ah, oh, he's got his fat fingers over his face as he thinks. Mm, thinking deeply. I wonder if he's got his notepad with him today. He always has his notepad. There it is! You knew it was coming, He's lost kidder. his pen. <laughs> he doesn't need a pen. He's written down his facts. He's thinking, that's what we're doing, working it out from the Bible. Balls in the air with a hat. Balls in what? the air? What? Oh, it's a jester's hat. What's a jester's hat? Uh, it's someone who makes stuff up. He tells lies. He tells jokes. Ah, oh, Jesus said he was the king, but was he just making it up? Telling jokes. Oh, I see. A jester's hat and a crown. Oh, I know what we're working out today. Is Jesus really the king? Does he really have that power? Jesus said he was God himself. Today he's got to prove it. Let's go! Yes! The secret agent is going to find out who Jesus is. He's going to uncover the truth. Is he really God? Or is he just pretending to be? Are you ready to sing a song? We're going to sing a song about Jesus being the King of Kings. I wonder if you remember this one. We haven't done it for a while, but it's a really fun song.
Today's Bible story is from the book of Luke. Let's watch carefully and see if we can find out three facts. Number one, why is the lady feeling so sad? Number two, what miracle did Jesus do? And number three, how did Jesus do that? How could Jesus do that? After the video, we're going to have a craft with Emma. <laughs> Jesus and the Widow's Son from Luke chapter 7 verses 11 to 17 The town was rising up slowly in the distance. Walking along the road, leading a large crowd was Jesus. He was setting a steady pace as he made his way towards the town. The crowd, who included his disciples, had just seen Jesus show his power and his care by healing a servant girl with just a word. As they approached this new town, a town called Nain, they wondered whether Jesus would have another opportunity to show how powerful and caring he was. They wouldn't have to wait long. While Jesus' crowd was still some way off, there was an even bigger crowd coming slowly out of the city gates. As this crowd walked, you could hear the cries and screams of people in mourning. Leading this procession was a widow bent over with sorrow. She had tears streaming from her eyes, and she looked like someone who had lost all hope. Directly behind her were four men, who marched slowly in unison. On their shoulders they carried a coffin, the coffin of this widow's only son. Her whole life seemed ruined and without hope. Slowly and steadily, the procession moved forward along the road that led out of the town. The cries of anguish continued to echo loudly in the air. It wasn't long before the crowd with Jesus saw the funeral procession. Quickly, the crowd coming towards the city moved off to the side of the road. They all had their heads bowed with respect as they saw the widow leading this procession for her dead son. Everyone stood off to the side except for one person. And Jesus stayed standing on the road, directly in front of the widow. When he had seen this lady, his heart went out to her, and he felt such care and compassion towards her. He reached out his hand and said in a soft and gentle voice, Don't cry. Don't cry? To say don't cry to a woman who had just lost her only son? How cruel these words could have sounded. But when Jesus spoke these words, he wasn't being cruel. Jesus could say them because Jesus is the one who has all power, and he cares for people. The men carrying the coffin stood still with shocked looks on their faces. What were they to do? They watched, growing more and more nervous, as Jesus walked up past the widow towards the coffin. Slowly he raised his hand and he touched it. The mourners and the widow gasped in horror. For a stranger to touch a dead man's coffin, it... It was just wrong. Then Jesus spoke in a firm and steady voice. The words echoed around like thunder. Get up! He commanded. Get up? To say get up to a dead person in front of their family and their friends, well, that's just cruel. And it's also stupid. Dead people can't get up, they're dead. But when Jesus said these words, they weren't stupid, and they weren't cruel. Because Jesus is the one who has all power, and Jesus is the one who cares. The men carrying the coffin were horrified. How could this man say such a thing? They were thinking about putting the coffin down to push the man away when... They felt the coffin move. And as they slowly lifted their eyes, the widow's son sat up and began talking to them. Gasps and screams and cheers rose from the crowd as they realised that this young man was no longer dead. He was alive! Jesus had shown his power by raising a dead person back to life. The crowds looked on as the coffin bearers quickly put the coffin down. They stood there in astonishment as Jesus reached out and gently took the boy by the hand. Slowly, Jesus helped the boy step over the coffin edge and onto solid ground. He then led the boy towards his mother. 
She put out her arms carefully, unsure whether all this was happening or whether it was just a wonderful, wonderful dream. As she touched her son with her own two hands, a sudden wave of happiness came over her. This man, Jesus, had cared for her so much that he had given back her son, her only son. Soon the sound of partying filled the air. People were shouting and clapping and jumping up and down. Cheers and praises filled the sky. As people considered what they had just seen, they were overwhelmed with joy. They had seen Jesus show in the most amazing and spectacular way that he cares for people who are hurting. But even more than that, they had seen that Jesus had power like no one else. He could even bring the dead back to life. And so they praised him loudly. Oh, I didn't see you guys over there. Just trying to solve the case of the happy and sad face man. Today's craft, we're going to be making a happy face and a sad face. It's looking a little something like this. So let's get started. Let's look what's in our week two bag. We have two little plates, little cardboard plates. You'll have some colouring crayons. You'll have two ice cream sticks. And some googly eyes. I also have some extra little decorations. So if you need to pause the video to go get some stickers and some glue because you'll need some glue or some paint and more coloring things anything you want if you want to make um one like mine with the two-sided you'll put some glue on the back of this one stick your popsicle stick onto the back put some glue onto this one all over the apron and put it like that and then it will be stuck together but if you want to make singular faces, you will still put glue on the back of this and stick a popsicle stick on this one. And then you will do the exact same on this side. So let's begin. Now that we've glued, let's get started on decorating. Ta-da! Here's my happy face and my sad face. I'm sure your guys' looks just as awesome as mine. I hope you guys had loads of fun and I'll see you next week. Bye! Sunshine is the one who 
was a really fun song. Jesus, you're my superhero. I love that song. Now for the challenge for today. Hmm. Can you make a maze for someone? Do you know what a maze is? A maze is a tricky pattern that you have to do to get through to the end. I want you to make a maze for someone to do. You can draw it. You can tape it to the floor. You could put string outside in your garden for them to do it. I wonder how quickly they can get through the maze. Do you think they'll get stuck in the maze? Do you think they'll get lost in the maze? Let's see. Now, secret agents need to be fast thinking and fast moving. Just like you have to be in a maze. Oh, look, he's drawing. Oh, yes, I know who that is. Look, it's the investigator looking round the corner. Yeah, working out the facts, hearing the truth, Bill. Finding out from the Bible what really happened. He looks shocked. Big mouth. Oh. He's shocked at a catapult. A catapult standing on its own. Oh no, 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 not a catapult, a crutch, Bill. There it is. It's a man dancing. I would look shocked if I danced like that. You would look shocked. No, he's leaping for joy. Oh, he's a man who's been healed. That's why, oh, like in today's story. The man who was dead was brought back to life by Jesus. And he's brought a happy friend with a big piece of cardboard. Oh, I'd be happy if I had a big piece of cardboard like that. It's a good piece of cardboard. Good Good news! It's good news! Oh, donuts! Free donuts for everyone! Donuts as big as your head! I don't think that's the good news. Look, it's the big hand. It's Jesus' hand. It's his good news! Jesus has big hands. That's the good news. No, it's not the good news. We learned today that Jesus raised the dead man to life. He came to love the widow. Jesus is the one who must be the king. Jesus gives life which only God can do. Yeah, we did it. We worked it out. The secret agent has uncovered some special truth. He's discovered that Jesus is the king. So, today's question. Well, Jesus really is the king. Who is Jesus? He's the king. This is Queen Elizabeth. We know she's the queen because she wears a crown. A very fancy crown. She wears fancy clothes and she lives in a palace. And her face is even on the stamp in England. We can be sure she's a queen because she cares about people and uses her queen power to look after people. But today we're going to talk about a king. The greatest king ever. We're going to talk about Jesus. He's the most powerful and most loving king. He didn't look like a king. He didn't wear a crown. He didn't live in a palace. He didn't even wear fancier clothes. He was just like a normal person. Long, long ago, God promised to send a king. He said the king would rule over everyone. He would love his people, he would rule forever, and no king would ever compare. Because God, God's king, would be God himself. A king who is God, imagine what he'd look like. You'd expect the biggest crown, the fanciest clothes, and the strongest army, and the fanciest palace ever. But this isn't, this is what God's people were expecting. And this is why they were surprised when an ordinary looking man showed up in plain clothes, no palace, and Jesus said he was God. Now remember, yes, last week's story was the man who Jesus forgave his sins. And now that's something that God can only do. Remember, we learned about that. People didn't believe his words. So he fixed the man's legs to show that he really was God, that he could do miracles. He can forgive our sins too, but Jesus doesn't want to just forgive our sins. He wants to be our king too. He wants to be number one in our lives. Because he is the king that God promised to send. And what a king 
is Jesus. He's a great king. Today's story showed us just how powerful he is and everything that he can do for us. He isn't a distant king who lives in a palace far away. He knows our name. He looks after us. He doesn't care if we're rich or if we're poor, if we wear fancy clothes or normal clothes. He loves us all the same. Now there was a lady in the video today who was very, very sad. She was a widow, which meant her husband had died. And now she was at a funeral for her child, her son. How sad do you think she must have been? I can't even imagine it. Maybe, possibly, it was the saddest day of her life. Jesus is the king, and he saw this lady. How she was crying. One of his people was hurting very much. She was really, really sad, and her heart was really sore. When someone you love is hurting, you feel sad too. Jesus loves his people so much, and he said to her, don't cry. And then he did what only God can do. He, sent, he said to her dead son, young man, I say to you, get up and walk. And he did. Jesus brought the dead man, the dead son, back to life. Imagine how happy that lady must have been in that very moment. Her saddest day ever became her happiest day ever. Her son was alive again. Now Jesus may have looked like an ordinary man, but he is extraordinary because he is God. And when Jesus brought the young man back to life, he showed the lady that her son and all the people that were watching, that he had power to do anything. That only God, the power that only God has, and that he really was God. He has the power to give people life. With this miracle, Jesus shows us that he has power over everything. As God promised, the king, who has power over all, will be in charge of everything. Now, if you lived in England in the United Kingdom and Queen Elizabeth was your queen, she would be great, but her power is limited. She can't do everything. She can't tell people in France what to do. She can't tell people in South Africa what to do. She can only tell people in England what to do. She has power over some people, but not all people. She doesn't know our names. She doesn't know where people live. She doesn't know when we're feeling happy or when we're feeling sad. And even though she's been queen for a very, very long time, she won't be the queen forever. But Jesus has unlimited power. Not even death can compete with his power. He loves people so deeply and he knows you and he knows me. He knows everyone in the whole world. He knows our names. He knows where we live. He knows our favorite ice cream flavor. He knows when we're happy. He knows when we're sad. He knows it all. And we can be friends with him. You can be friends with him and I can be friends with him. We can be friends with the king of the world. Wow, that's pretty cool. How amazing is it that a king of the world wants to be your friend and he wants to be a part of your life? Have you asked Jesus to be the king of your life yet? What's stopping you? With Jesus as the king of your life, you're never going to be alone. If you're scared, Jesus is with you. He's always there to listen to us. He's always loved us and cared for us. And best of all, he will be the king forever. We get to spend forever with him. That's amazing. Now the next time you see a picture of Queen Elizabeth, which we don't see all the time here in South Africa, but you might see her on TV or in the newspaper. Think about Jesus, God's promised king. He is the most loving, most powerful, forever king. 
And the best part is that we can have him as our king. Let's say a prayer. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for being the king of our lives. We thank you for caring for us and looking after us, even when we don't deserve it. Lord, we pray that you will always be the king in our lives. You will always be number one to us. Lord, that we would put you first and would remember every day that you are the king of our lives. We love you, Jesus, and we thank you for this. Amen. Okay, guys, have a great week. I'll see you next week. Be good, and remember, Jesus is king of our lives.